In this video, we focus on fatty acids. Fatty acids are molecules recognized by the presence of a carboxylic acid group, hence the name acid in the molecule, and a generally long carbon chain, typically between 12 and 20 or more carbon atoms. This chain can be either saturated, meaning entirely consisting of carbon-carbon single bonds, or it can be unsaturated, meaning that there's at least one carbon-carbon double bond within that. Fatty acids are essential biomolecules not only as a source of energy in the body, but they are also the building blocks of more complex lipids such as waxes, triglycerides, and phospholipids that form the cell membrane. Let's take a closer look at fatty acids. Hydrogen of Fatty acids are molecules that have a carboxylic acid group, COOH, with 12 to 20 carbon atoms, and sometimes even more than 12 to 20 carbon atoms in total within the structure. These molecules are generally found to have an even number of carbon atoms. This is because the building blocks that create fatty acids are built upon two carbons. One common building block is a molecule called acetyl-CoA, which donates two carbon atoms toward the structure. As a result, the structures have an even number of carbon atoms in total. Fatty acids can be classified as either saturated or unsaturated. Saturated fatty acids have only carbon-carbon single bonds throughout the chain of carbons, unsaturated, have at least one and sometimes more carbon-carbon double bond present. The reason why we call them saturated versus unsaturated is if we create a molecule that has exclusively carbon-carbon single bonds, then to fill the complete octet, we saturate the molecule with hydrogen atoms, meaning we max out the number of hydrogens that can possibly exist per carbon atom. So it's got the maximum ratio possible of hydrogens to carbon atoms. On the other hand, when we place a carbon-carbon double bond into the chain, in order to avoid going over the octet rule, we have to remove hydrogen atoms, hence unsaturated fatty acids do not have the maxed out hydrogen to carbon ratio, hence we call them unsaturated with regard to how many hydrogens are present within the molecule. Now within the realm of unsaturated fats, unsaturated fats can be broken into two categories, cis unsaturated fats and trans unsaturated fats. The term trans fat, which has gained kind of a negative reputation in recent years for poor health outcomes, is derived from this terminology here. Trans fatty acids are ones in which the alkene group is trans in orientation. I'm going to draw a squiggly line out here at the end to denote that this chain would continue onward. Here's our carbon-carbon double bond. And thinking back to what we learned about trans referring to this zigzag pattern where relative to the carbon here, the bond leading away from the alkene group goes up. Coming over to here, the bond goes down. They're going off in opposite directions. There was one up, one down, or one left, one right, however you orient the molecule. This causes the bond to be referred to as a trans bond. So trans unsaturated fats have at least one of these types of bonds. Cis, on the other hand, refers to the stereoisomer, where instead the orientation of the two groups coming away from the alkene group both go in the same orientation. So it gives this bowl type shape that we see here. This is like a right side up bowl. You could also turn the bowl sideways or upside down. However you place it, this is referred to as cis because relative to this carbon atom on the left of the alkene group, the bond leading away and the chain goes up. This one, on the other carbon of the alkene, the bond leading away also goes up. So they go on the same face of the molecule. They're both going up 
or if we turned this bowl shape upside down, we would say they were both going down. And that would be referred to as a cis fat. Cis fats or cis fatty acids are typical in nature. As a result, unprocessed foods typically are enriched in these so-called cis fats or these so-called good fats. So how do trans fats arise? Trans fats arise through food processing. The processes that can result in the formation of trans fats include heat during food processing, which can provide the energy necessary to result in a chemical reaction that ultimately converts cis bonds into trans. Also a process common in food processing referred to as partial hydrogenation also is recognized as a way that cis fats become trans fats. Partial hydrogenation is an industrial process that is used to change the flavor properties of foods where the alkene group is subjected to a so-called hydrogenation reaction, such as we'll illustrate here, where we have our alkene group starting off as cis, and during a hydrogenation reaction, as the name hydrogen implies, hydrogen is brought in, along with typically a metal catalyst during the food processing process to catalyze the reaction, but rather than there being enough hydrogen relative to the fatty acid for the reaction to go to completion and add the hydrogens across the carbon-carbon double bond to give a carbon-carbon single bond there, instead there's a shortage of H2, or we could think of H2 as the limiting reagent for the reaction. And so there isn't enough hydrogen there for the reaction to fully take place. As a result, rather than getting the expected product, which would be adding the two hydrogens here to give an alkane group of a saturated fat, instead what results is the formation of a trans fat, where we'll show the carbon-carbon double bond there now in the trans configuration. Since there are a plethora of different fatty acids, and generally these don't go by IUPAC names, we have a shorthand way of quickly classifying fatty acids to give an understanding of the structure based on this shorthand notation. We classify fatty acids by placing in parentheses the term X colon Y, where X in this denotes how many carbon atoms there are in total within the fatty acid. Y, on the other hand, denotes the total number of alkene groups. Hence, based on this classification, we can determine whether a fatty acid is saturated or unsaturated. We can determine how many unsaturations there are, or in other words, how many double bonds there are. And we can also determine how many carbons are in that carbon chain. This is important information to have in shorthand notation because it will allow us to predict such things as whether the material is a waxy solid or a liquid oil at room temperature, and will also allow us to compare structures of different fatty acids to one another. To take this to another step, the position of the alkene group within the carbon chain can be denoted by adding after that Y, which indicates the total number of alkene groups, N, which indicates the particular carbon number location, and Z, which is the carbon numerical location where the alkene group begins. Let's take a look at a couple of example molecules to illustrate this shorthand notation in action. This molecule is referred to as lauric acid. I do not expect you to memorize the names of these different fatty acids. If you were to need the name of this, you could look it up or you'd be provided with a chart of that information. Looking at lauric acid, underneath the name lauric acid is parentheses C120. That C there denotes that there are 12 carbon atoms. Listing the C there is an optional step in using this shorthand notation. Sometimes you will see this listed simply as 12 colon zero, indicating that there are a total of 12 carbon atoms since the first number in that 
represents number of carbon atoms. And then Y, the second number, zero, represents the number of double bonds. And you can see here within this zigzag chain, there are no carbon-carbon double bonds. Now, you may be looking at this structure and you might say to yourself, wait a minute, last chapter we learned about IUPAC nomenclature of carboxylic acids. And we numbered the carbon chain starting at the carboxylic acid carbonyl group. In this structure, they've numbered it the opposite way. What gives? Well, what gives is that the rules are different for fatty acids. With fatty acids, we number from the end of the aliphatic chain or the end of the alkyl chain, as we could call it. The aliphatic chain refers to the chain that is very nonpolar. And this is important because that extra piece of information that we can add to this is if we have an alkene group, we can indicate where that alkene group is located by putting after our notation of number of carbon atoms and number of alkene groups, we can put the letter N and dash Z and fill in Z with the carbon atom number where the alkene group starts. Let's illustrate that for this unsaturated fatty acid below, which is referred to by the name palmitoleic acid. And I do not expect you to memorize this structure. Instead, I expect you to look up this structure and apply the information that we're learning here about shorthand notation and things like that to describe this molecule and others. Underneath this, we see, as I'm highlighting here, C16 colon 1. That indicates to us that there are 16 carbon atoms in this molecule. And again, this C here is optional. So you could have just seen 16 colon 1. There is one carbon-carbon double bond, and this N-7 comes back up here to our template, where Z represented the carbon number where the alkene group starts. N represents that carbon number. So N-7 indicates that at position 7 of the carbon chain is where the carbon-carbon double bond is. And again, we number beginning at the end of the aliphatic group here, rather than at the carboxylic acid end. So we come over here to position number seven, and that's where the double bond begins. We could also classify this alkene group, although not in the shorthand notation if we wanted, as cis. And it's no surprise that it's cis, with this being a natural unsaturated fatty acid, that the configuration of this here would be cis. And this molecule has just one carbon-carbon double bond. So there's only one position there where we would be able to describe it as cis. Remember that carbon-carbon single bonds aren't described as cis or trans because they can freely rotate around to adopt a huge variety of conformations. To reiterate and solidify our information on fatty acids, we're going to apply what we learned earlier in the video toward this problem where we are presented with the key fatty acid composition found in grapeseed oil. And we will classify each fatty acid here as saturated or unsaturated in shorthand XY notation, indicating the number of carbon atoms and the number of alkene groups, and will indicate cis versus trans wherever applicable. That's going to be at our carbon-carbon double bonds. And again, I don't expect you to memorize any of the names of these structures. If you need the names and structures, you can either look that up or you'll be provided with a cheat sheet of that information. So let's take a look at linoleic acid with 18 carbons, as it says here, or you could go through and count these. In this structure with 18 carbon atoms in total, that XY notation we would denote as X as the first number. You could put C18 if you wanted to, but you don't have to. And then 18 colon Y denotes the number of carbon-carbon double bonds. I see a grand total of two carbon-carbon double bonds here and here. So we would refer to this as an 18 colon two fatty acid. Now, if you wanted to also specify the location of those carbon-carbon double bonds, you would put N dash and then comma N dash, and we would fill in this space right here and here that I've currently highlighted as an empty box with the numerical location where each of those alkene groups starts. Remember to start numbering from the end furthest away from the carboxylic acid. So in other words, start numbering at the aliphatic terminal of the molecule, the nonpolar terminal of the molecule. I number each and every carbon atom. And what I see here is that I have an alkene group starting at carbon six. So I would call this N-6. 
I also have an alkene group starting at carbon number nine, so I would also call this N-9. So our complete shorthand designation would be 18 colon two, and then optionally you could put N-6 and N-9 to indicate the specific location of the alkene groups within that chain. I would also expect you to be able to accomplish this problem in the opposite direction, meaning rather than being given a structure and asked to classify it, if I gave you information about the classification, you should be able to draw me an example of a fatty acid that fits that criteria. Let's take a look at the next example, oleic acid. Oleic acid also has 18 carbon atoms in total. So I'm going to call that an 18 colon one fatty acid because it has just one carbon carbon double bond right there. If we wanted to specify the location of it, remember we start numbering from this end. That is the end furthest from our carboxylic acid. We see at position nine is the location where the alkene group starts. So I'd call this an N-9 fatty acid. Palmetto lake acid has 16 carbon atoms in total. And so we would refer to that as a 16, or you could also see this as a C16. I'll put it this way to give you information on how there are multiple ways that are acceptable here. So it was a C16 colon one, because there's one carbon carbon double bond present there. We could specify the location of that if we wanted and call that an N comma seven fatty acid because our sole alkene group right here starts at carbon seven, where again, we number from the end furthest away from the carboxylic acid. Going to the fatty acids on the right side of our chart here, stearic acid has 18 carbons and only carbon carbon single bonds. So we would just call this an 18 colon zero fatty acid, indicating that it is a saturated fatty acid. Anytime that second number is zero, that's going to indicate that the molecule is saturated Anytime that number is not zero, it's gonna indicate the molecule is unsaturated. Palmitic acid has 16 carbons. So I'm gonna call this a 16 colon zero fatty acid because I see no carbon carbon double bonds. Myristic acid has 14 carbons in total. We're given that formula there. And even if we weren't, we could go through and count the number of carbon atoms, 14 colon zero, because there's no carbon carbon double bonds there. And then finally, alpha linolenic acid has 18 carbon atoms at the bottom of our screen here. So I would call that an 18 or a C18 fatty acid colon. And then it has three carbon carbon double bonds. So I'm gonna call that an 18 three fatty acid. If you wanted, you could go in and count the starting location of each of those three alkene groups, like we did for linoleic acid up in the upper left-hand corner and indicate the positions of each of those to further classify it. Now we've taken care of the first part of this, classifying each fatty acid as saturated versus unsaturated. Unsaturated were all of our examples where the second number in the shorthand denotion was not zero. Saturated was where the second number in that shorthand notation was zero. We filled in the shorthand notation for each of them and specifying all as cis or trans we can go ahead and resolve this right away that all of these naturally occurring fatty acids, when they have an alkene group, all of those carbon carbon double bonds are cis. Now, what I want you to avoid when you are doing these types of problems is don't ever try to classify a carbon carbon single bond of these chains as cis or trans. Due to the fact that those bonds can freely rotate, describing them as cis or trans is not accurate. Cis and trans indicate the exact 3D shape that these atoms are locked in, which has important implications for the physical properties of these molecules and how they interact with the body. And that is why we need to be able to recognize those.